Hey guys, what's going on? Today we are going to be jumping in and I'm going to show you a product that is making anywhere from like 15 to 30, 40 thousand dollars a month and how we figure that out. And then I'm going to show you how you can actually go in and create a product that is similar to this and what you would need to do to market it and bring in the sales to hopefully get you in that same realm. Um, there's obviously no guarantees that the product you're going to create is going to be, uh, you know, it's going to bring in the thirty, forty thousand dollars a month. But um, I want to help you at least get started on the right track. So um, if you don't know, my name is Wendy Joe. I teach you how to earn passive income from home. I have a digital product shop, mwco.shop, where I actually sell templates so that if all of this stuff is just too much for you, then you can actually get templates from my shop, edit them, and then turn them into products that you sell as your own. And so it just gives you that jump start. And I'm actually going to create the product that we're doing today based off of one of the templates that I sell. So. I'm just going to basically walk you through, I'm gonna screen record this whole process and I'm gonna show you how to create a digital product to sell on Etsy, or you can sell it on Shopify. Um, if you haven't watched my videos yet, you can watch them here where I'm actually comparing Etsy versus Shopify month after month and showing you what the sales look like and how much money I make on each platform selling the exact same products. So. Um, all right, let's jump into this. So this is the planner that um, is in question. And um, that this particular um, Etsy shop, it's called Manifestable, um, has been around for a while. They have 71,000 sales. They only have 27 listings though, you guys. So this kind of goes back to, you can do all the right things, say all the right things, learn all the right things, whatever. Like people say you need hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of listings in order to make the kind of money that this person is making. But I am here to tell you that this is proof. You do not have to have hundreds and hundreds of listings. Now, here's what I do not know. I do not know um, if they are paying for advertising. I do not know if they have some massive um, social media following somewhere or not. Um, what we can do is we can look down here in the about information about this shop and see. So they've been on Etsy since 2022. So you guys, that is not that long to have made the amount of money that this shop has made. And um, I know that there's a lot of people that have kind of taken and run with this um, whole that girl planner idea. Um, my thing is be unique. You just need to be unique um, because this is the original, that girl planner, as far as I know. Now, if I'm wrong, don't shoot me. I'm just telling you what I think that I can deduce from all of this. But um, this particular shop, you know, 71,000 sales, more than 71,000 sales in a year. I don't know if they started in January of 2022. If that's the case, it's been two years. I mean, we could go back here and look at reviews. Um, let me see if I can sort them by the oldest. No, nope, I can sort them by the most recent, which would then allow me to go to the very last page of reviews, 734. So it looks like they started around August of 2022. So they've been in business just a little over a year. Um, and, uh, they are on Pinterest. They are on Instagram. So they definitely are marketing their products through there. Uh, I just, I want to show you all the details because I want you to understand what goes into a shop like this. So they have 27 listings and this is where, so I'm going to click on a couple of these and I'm using the Everbee extension here. Um, I will link this up in the description, but um, this one, this particular listing has made $17,000 a month in revenue um, over the last 10 months. Now this, num these numbers are estimates. Um, Everbee says that their analysis is about 80% accurate because Etsy doesn't actually disclose um, the exact numbers. And so they take all of this information and put it together and figure out, you know, what is happening. So this is another listing for the That Girl Planner. It's literally the same listing. It's just another listing they put up, $2,425 a month. And what I want you to realize about this is and so this is an undated edition. This one's dated. This one they're advertising as a mid-year. It's in 20 plus carts. Let's analyze this one. 
$878 a month. Um, and then we kind of go into some of their other planners that they have. Um, but you can see most of their planners are in multiple people's cards. This one's making $4,000 a month, but their main one is this one. And earlier in the year, the average, um, I believe, was about close to $40,000 a month. Obviously, this average goes down through the year because people buy their planners December, January, February part of the year. So we're now towards the end of the year. So this is dwindling, but obviously this is going to pick back up as you go into the end of the year and the beginning of next year. So this is a great time if you're wanting to start a digital product business, specifically in the digital planner niche, then this is a great time to do that. Um, so let's go over, well, actually let's go through their listing. So first of all, the thing I want you to notice is they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So they've used every listing image plus a video. And that's, I mean, that is typical good SEO for Etsy. They want you to do that. The other thing that is now important inside of Etsy is that you are adding alt text to every image and those types of things. But their video is just scrolling through and showing you all the pages on the That Girl Planner, you know, just what it looks like. And they have a little intro and then it just goes right into all the things. And now we'll look at the next page, the 532 fully hyperlinked pages and then become that girl. They kind of really just explain all the details here, give samples. I mean, it's just, it's a very aesthetically pleasing look and outline, et cetera. And then they obviously show it in use where somebody's written in here and you know, they've added their pictures and good notes and so, They've done a really nice job of showing the beauty of the product as well as the functionality of it. And so um, then you go over to the description and they have written, you know, just a simple description. They show what else in there. And then they have matching digital stickers that you can get. They tell you what you're going to receive, etc. Okay. So this is the That Girl Planner. That I mean, this is the one that... I think everybody kind of makes videos about and um, raves about. So now let's go into Canva and I am going to show you, basically what I'm gonna show you is how I would create this particular product and a couple of different ways you could do it. Um, now you did notice, I'm sure that this is 532 fully hyperlinked pages. So the first thing I want to tell you is you cannot, inside of Canva, create a 532 page um, planner. There's just, there's no way. Their max is 300 pages and there's also a max to how many elements that you can actually use inside of um, a document. So um, I created, so this is the ultimate business plan or ultimate business planner that I created. So um, this one is 652 pages, I believe, fully hyperlinked. And so basically what I did is I created the designs and the layouts inside of Canva, but then I actually had to create this planner inside of Keynote. And you would have to do the same thing if you were going to create a 500 page hyperlinked planner. You cannot do the entire thing inside of Canva. What you can do is create the pretty part and then you can create the other basic parts of it inside of Keynote. And I'm, I'll, I'll take you in here and show you all the different parts of this one and then kind of show you um, the other planner that I'm going to work off of as well, which is my self-care planner, because I want you to understand like the different ways that you can create a digital planner and, um, you know, fully get it up and running. So in here, this is the first thing I did was I created planner backgrounds and, um, I created a front cover and there's two in each of these because, um, I did one that had all of the words on it and then one that is blank. And then this is like the layout page and then the layout page blank. And then these are the section dividers and the section dividers blank. And then I created another set of backgrounds. And so with my PLR planner, the way that I sell it, I give you all of this. So if you want to start completely from scratch and create all the hyperlinks and all that kind of stuff yourself, you can. <laughs> but I am here to tell you it is 
it's hours of work. It really is. Now, because mine comes with a PLR license, it does sell for more than the you know, $10 that she sells hers for. And I think she has them on sale right now for like $2 and 97 cents a piece. Um, but the reason that mine is more expensive is because it comes with the PLR license. So I've done all of that work for you. And then you just come in and change up the planner backgrounds and the inner, um, look, and then all the hyperlinks are already done. And I will actually, I'm going to open my thank you letter because that'll be the easiest for me to actually get to. So these are all the things that come with the planner. Um, and again, you don't have to use my PLR templates. I'm showing you based on my PLR templates just because I'm not recreating the entire thing for you guys. It would take hours. <laughs> so I'm just showing you based on my planner templates, but you can absolutely, I'm going to show you how to do this so that you could actually go in and do this yourself. Um, so if you purchase the PLR, you're going to get all of these planner template parts. This is the planner background. This is the keynote. So I'm going to actually open the keynote planner. So while my computer is thinking, I'm going to actually show you the self-care planner. So the self-care planner that we have is actually um, in that boho aesthetic that the That Girl planner is in. And I feel like is probably um, going to be the easiest stylistically to match the That Girl planner. That being said, I go back to what I said at the very beginning, be unique, be original. Like just because she has had such great success, I say she could be a guy, um, but I think, no, no, it doesn't say who owns it actually. Um, but just because they've had such great success with the That Girl style doesn't mean that you have to copy that exact style in order to have that same success. So I will show you how you can implement this into um, Keynote, but again, the hyperlinking, <laughs> um, you can't bring hyperlinks over into Keynote with them still looking the same. And again, I'm going to show you all of this. This is going to be a fairly lengthy tutorial, but I want you guys to understand what goes into this, but also understand how to create it if you want to create something like this. Okay, so anything that has these little red, pink um, arrows means that it's hyperlinked. So you can see the amount of hyperlinking that happens within this. So all the hyperlinking is done on each section page, uh, on each individual page, etc. So that is why 652 pages of hyperlinking. So that is why that inside of Canva, what you do to make this a little bit simpler is um, you go in and you just change these three main pages. All right, so I'm gonna use a copy of this and show you how you would edit the Ultimate Planner if that's what you were going with. And I'm actually getting ready to release a neutral tones of this um, planner uh, interior because the interior right now on this particular one is um, more of like the, you know, the pinks and the, the um, pinks and grays and that kind of stuff. And so I'm going to do a more um, neutral tone with browns interior. And then I'm also going to do one with like blacks, blacks and grays, like more neutral tones. So I am going to be releasing those um, and those will be um, fully hyperlinked and stuff because whenever you use this particular planner, the only thing that you have to change on this, you guys, is the main cover, which is this image here the section headers, because obviously they match. And then the backdrop, you can either leave this backdrop like it is. So like if your planner has this pink color in it and the, you know, you, you can work with this particular color scheme, then you can leave the backdrop the same. Um, if not, then you can also change that. But I'm going to show you how to change those. Um, so this is the simple way to get a planner up and running. And then I'm going to show you the other way. A couple of other ways actually um okay so let's go in i'm going to close this out because i don't want to accidentally mess that up and um we're going to make a copy of this because we're inside of the copy yeah okay um so this is what we're going to do i'm going to show you how you're going to create a backdrop for your digital planner and these are locked just so that nothing gets deleted um from the original because I always am concerned for people <laughs> when they get in here and they start editing and accidentally delete things that they don't need to. So, um, all right, 
So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to show you how easy this is, you guys. Um, we are going to actually, we're going to use a combination. So we're going to go over here and I am going to use this as my um, cover. So I would, if I was actually doing this, I would not just do like copy the planner. I would actually download this as a PNG and then upload it because the quality is better if you download this first and then re-upload it. If you just copy to clipboard, the quality is not going to be quite as good. But for this example, we're going to do this. I'm just going to show you. So I'm going to copy that and now I'm going to paste it. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this in here, make sure that this works here. And what I should have done is um, deleted the self-care planner off of that before I copied it, because um, if you do that, then it enables you to change this planner into whatever you want it to be. It could be self-care, it could be ADHD, it could be my healing journey, it could be anything you want, right? Okay, so we're gonna move the position of this all the way to, well, I say all the way, just behind these. Okay, so now I'm gonna make sure that these aren't locked. Um, no, nothing is locked here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, this is a fun new feature that is just fantastic. I can apply the colors from this image to the page. Bam. Now we have a super cute self-care planner that is fall themed, which I kind of love. Um, and it's ready to go like bam. So that's how easy it is to turn this into a entirely new planner that right now, you know, the interiors have that pink color. I can go over here and show you, um, but I will be releasing a different color and you could still use this one with that cover. And I'll show you how in just a second, but okay. So I did this. So now what I'm going to do now, you could change up the background. Like if you don't want this to be a solid peach and you want this to be something different, then you can search in backgrounds um, for whatever, like whatever floats your boat, really. Um, let's just glance through and see what we can find. That's just kind of aesthetic and cute. I mean, you could even do that. I mean, you could do whatever, whatever you wanted and you could um make that super transparent if you wanted it to be like this um something else you could do is um you can edit the photo oops not that photo um see if it gives you any other options like you could make it a little peachier so i mean you you could do kind of whatever you wanted to or if you wanted more contrast make it black and white like you could do whatever you want to. We're gonna leave it just the solid color just for this particular um, example. But um, okay, so we're taking this. And so now we're gonna come down here and we're gonna copy, just Command C to copy that background. And then I'm going to delete this little background image that we have in here. And then I'm gonna hit Command Paste. And we're gonna go to Design Styles and we're going to apply these exact same colors here to the page so that it duplicated what we did there. And again, if you don't like this color, you can obviously change it to a different color. Um, and then we're gonna do the exact same thing here. So this one we have locked. Um, so I'm going to delete the backgrounds here. We're going to copy this background and put it here. And then on this one, we're going to delete all of these elements. I'm going to leave this element here and I'll explain why in a second. Okay. And so now we're going to do the exact same thing to this one that we just did to the last one. And it's doing the same exact thing. We're leaving this here because whenever we go into Keynote, you'll notice it has these. And that way you can add your labels to the pages. So you have your three pages that you need. Oh, I forgot to add this. So we're gonna add this again to those section pages. So if you don't want it to have this exact same look, then you can obviously go in and change up, you know, what image you pull from. Okay, so I went ahead and recreated this page here um, just because this was a solid image and I wanted this without the self-care planner on it. So now I'm going to 
um, copy this to the clipboard. And again, if you are um, actually using an image from another um, template, then I would recommend that you actually download the image first, or there is a way in Pro where you can actually import images directly from um, another, um, another template, but I don't wanna use that feature in here in case if you are not using Pro. Uh, okay, so now that I have that, I'm going to bring that over here and expand this. And the sizes are slightly different on these, but it's pretty easy to, um, you know, just kind of edit to make it how you want it to do. If you really want to, um, to make it the exact size, then you would need to um, kind of work inside of here, but this will work for this one. Okay, and then we're gonna send this one back behind here. That way you have a spot for your headers. Okay, so now we have our three pages. And so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to download PNGs and I'm just doing pages eight, nine, and 10 because I don't need to download all of these other ones. So eight, nine, and 10, done. We're gonna download those. So now we have our duplicate that we're working on and I'm gonna close out my original just so that I don't accidentally make changes to it. Okay, so this is our duplicate and I'm gonna show you inside of Keynote, how you would then turn this into a completely different planner. So the first thing in Keynote, you're gonna to go to edit slide layouts. Um, if you're working inside of PowerPoint, uh, you're gonna use wherever you edit the master slides um, for a theme, that's where you're gonna go. This is how you do it inside of Keynote is edit slide layouts. So here we are. So whenever you first go into edit slide layouts in a normal, um, document or keynote, these are all going to have like just basically white with title and subtitles and all that kind of stuff on there. And you can see I have added um, different types of things. So what I'm going to do is these were already assigned to pages, right? So I'm going to go in and I'm going to change this title slide. Um, and how you do this, you're going to select over here. If you're working with a brand new document um, creating from scratch, then you would just choose image fill, but it should already be set on image fill because we have this. We have it set to scale to fit, and then we're gonna choose our image. And here's our copy. So this was our cover, so we're gonna insert that. So now that has replaced the cover. We're gonna go here, and we're going to choose, we're gonna go with this one, insert, and that's gonna replace that. And now we're gonna go to this one, choose here, insert that. When you're done inside of Keynote, you're gonna hit exit slide layout. Wherever you're at, you're gonna exit and change it that way. Now you have a completely new planner. That's how simple it is <laughs> to go in and change the look of the entire planner. And it has changed, uh, you know, basically the whole look of the planner. The only thing you will want to then go in and do is double click on words like this and change the font. So you can go into text and you can see that the text color right now is set at that peachy pink color. So I would just go in and either choose a color from here or you can choose the color wheel and you can use the eyedropper tool and you can come over and pick a color. You can drag it over here and add it as a color. So that way you have that as your color. And basically you can just go through your pages and make sure that there isn't anything that needs to be changed to that new color. So like for instance, these I don't think really look bad because they just kind of look peachy. These are a little pink. These are groups. So you'd have to ungroup them first. And then you should be able to format the color of this style. Here we go. So under style, then you would go in and you can actually select, I don't think you can select multiple on this particular one. Um, so you're gonna just hit the fill, color fill. And again, you can just go in and you can pick a color or you can you know, do, use the eyedropper tool to change those. So these are the elements that you would need to go through and change inside of this ultimate planner. But, 
once you have made the changes, then again, if you go with something neutral, then you could really just like change the theme and sell like 50 different planners that are basically the same thing. They just look different because they're different colors and different covers, right? When you're working with the PLR template, this is, that's how simple it is to just go in and edit this stuff. And so like you can go in and highlight multiple things on a page and change them all at once. So like, because we changed to orange earlier, we can click here and click here. But basically you just would go through, double check, make sure everything is visible and um, works well with your entire document. And then once you're done, then you would share this as a PDF and um, export, you'd export and send. So um, the easiest way to do it is export to PDF. And once it's exported as a PDF, then it can be utilized inside of GoodNotes, inside of Notability, inside of NoteWriter, any of those types of things. So um, that is how you easily can change an entire planner that is pre-done for you and all hyperlinked very quickly. Um, and this particular planner is also linked to Google Calendar and Apple Calendar, which is just a nice feature. Uh, so this is the simple way to create an entirely new looking planner without a whole lot of effort. Um, and again, the, the things that you would need to purchase for sure for this would just be the ultimate planner. And I'll link this up below, but the ultimate planner. And again, it's going to come with all of these different things. So if you want to go in and re hyperlink everything you can, um, I'm just trying to make it to where you don't have to, if you don't want to, um, because really you guys saw how simple that was. You change this, this, and this, and then you change your master slide and it changes the entire document just like that. And it's, it's done because those slides are already applied to all those pages. And so there's really not a lot that has to be done. Um, okay. Let's go back in now and talk about the other options that you can do. I'm going to show you how to create a planner based off of the self-care planner that we have. Um, and this would work with the business in the box or anything like that. So the self-care planner comes with 54 pages and this is also hyperlinked. You guys, um, it's, I, I don't want to say it's bare bones because it's definitely not bare bones. It has a lot in it, but like you could definitely make these pages very cute, very easily. So like if you decide to go with a cover like this, then you could make all of these um, divider pages kind of match this aesthetically. Same with this one, same with this one, that type of thing. So it's pretty easy to customize the look, the overall look of it. And with this particular planner, yes, it is hyperlinked, um, but it also hyperlinks to multiple pages. So like you have your vision board here, um, those types of things, but then like daily planners, there's one, two, three different types of daily planners. If you were to take this and make it your own, you could absolutely like completely rework this. So, um, actually let me make sure. Hmm. Don't want to work on my original. Let me close that out. Okay. So this is my copy. So I'm just going to show you what you could do pretty easily with this to make it um, work for you. So, um, first of all, you know, you could take and change up these covers to match whatever you do. So like, if you go with this theme, then you could copy this and, you know, put it on each page. Like you could make this however you want it to look. But then my thing would be like, if you, once you get into like the daily planner pages and the monthly planner pages, you could take this and you could make this be, January and actually, well, yeah, you could do this. So you could make this say January and then you could continue to duplicate this and make this all the different months. Now here's the deal. What's going to happen is, is if you go back home, you would link January, this January, you would then link it to that cover page that you just created. And so, and then you would do the same thing with this and the easiest way to relink this is to do it one time and then lock it all or not lock it, but group it all together and then hit copy and paste. 
and you can take it all the way across the board. Like you can just take it all the way down. Um, but so like inside of January, so let's say that you made this say January. So then you have January here um, and then you decide um, that, so we're gonna say that this is the calendar you go with. You could choose this planner or this planner, or you could go ahead and make a copy of this. We're gonna duplicate this page and then we're gonna bring it here to January. And I would name it January Planner 2, okay? And then I would choose a daily schedule, whichever one that you wanna use. So let's say you're gonna use this one. So then we would duplicate this page and bring it down here. Now, if I was creating a planner inside of Canva and wanted to keep it all inside of Canva, I would not make all 31 pages of January inside of Canva. I would give them one page. And then when you do your example video, you can show them that inside of GoodNotes, you can duplicate the, these pages inside of GoodNotes. So once they get their planner and they get into January, then they're just gonna go to their daily schedule and they're gonna duplicate that page 31 times for the month of January or each day, you know, just duplicate it before they start writing on it kind of a thing. Because Canva will not be able to hold all the daily schedules you would need for all 12 months. It just can't handle it. Like I said, it has a 300 page max. And if you um, start adding it, it will lock the whole thing up and you will lose all your things. <laughs> it's just, trust me, I've tried it. Um, so that's what I would do is I would do like, okay, here's this, here's the monthly planner. And then I would give it a weekly schedule as well, whichever weekly planner you want. So let's say you go with this one, duplicate the page, and we're gonna bring that down here and add that between. So we have the monthly planner, the weekly planner, the daily planner, and then maybe you want to add a habit tracker for the month or the monthly budget. So let's add a monthly budget. We're gonna do that. And we're gonna come up here to this. So we have our monthly budget. Um, you could add the debt tracker, but you could just leave that here. Um, you could do the daily affirmations page. So you could duplicate this page and bring that up here and add that into like right before your daily schedule. Um, and then what else would you add? You could do a weekly workout tracker, kind of whatever you want to add into your days. But then once you've done that, then you will duplicate this page and make a February and copy all of these exact same pages. So you could just go into February. You could go here, 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 here. And then you could right click and hit duplicate the five pages. And then you're going to just take February and pull it in front here. And then you're gonna duplicate this page and bring it down here in front of February. And then we're going to make this say February. And now we have all of February here. And you would just do this for each of the months and then just make sure that you have it, you know, organized. If you did it this way, you might want to take all of the extra options and just kind of add them at the end so they could have like the alternate pages if they wanted to. Or if you don't want to offer that, just completely remove it. But then once you've created January, February, all that kind of stuff, then you're going to want to go back up here to the index and you're going to want to relink everything. So currently January is linked to here. And so instead you would want it to link to this page. Then you say like this could be just linked to that monthly overview page still. And then each of the months here could be linked to, um, you know, the, the section pages that you created. And then here, what you would do is you would unlock this and then you would just ungroup and you're going to highlight, actually you don't even have to highlight. Yeah, you do. So you're gonna highlight the word January, you're gonna click the link, and you're going to trash the current link and link it to the correct page. So link it to whatever page you want. So if I delete this, then I can go down here and I can find where I put, so this is, it says monthly overview, but this is the one I changed to January. So I could change it to that and done and then test it and now I'm at January. And so you would do that all on the exact same index tab so that 
when you get it all done, then you will just copy it and delete and paste on each page. So like, say this is all completely done. Oh, also, if you don't want it to be underlined, you can highlight it and hit and underline it and it's still linked, but it just won't be underlined. So once you have edited these on one page, I would just do it on the year at a glance, then I would highlight all of these elements together, group them, and then you're gonna hit Command C to copy, and then you're gonna come down here and you're gonna hit this, unlock it, and then hit delete, and then you're gonna Command V, which is going to paste it, and so now this is gonna copy all those links that you just did, and you'll just do that on each page. So that is how you would edit the self-care planner in order to sell it. And whenever you edit the self-care planner, you will want to put photos in these be, or make them a pretty aesthetic um, blank so that they can fill them in with images inside of GoodNotes, which honestly, that's probably what I would do is just fill them in with this. And then when you're in GoodNotes, you can actually bring pictures in and stick them in here. Um, and it's not drag and drop like it would be inside of Canva, but it's still like, if you're familiar with GoodNotes, that's how it works. So once you're done making all of your edits inside of here, you're gonna share this as a PDF standard. And that is what you're able to um, use inside of GoodNotes or Notability or something like that. And so now I'm gonna take you inside of GoodNotes and show you how that works. The other thing that um, you would do is you would have deleted all the extra cover pages, which I forgot to do, because you wouldn't want to keep all the cover pages in here. This is where you can go in here, or your customer could go in here, and go to the month of January. And so now we're on the daily schedule, right click, copy, and then you should be able to paste it. And now you have another. And so then, you know, I mean, you just continue to paste over and over and over again um, until you have all of your pages. And so, you know, and whenever it does that, it still keeps all of the, the linking um, in there. There we go. Um, so yeah, so, so if your customer, let me go back over here. So if your customer, you know, gets this and they're like, um, hey, you know, I want, <laughs> I want to, have all the pages on here, then all they would have to do is, I'm sorry, this is so huge, you guys, I don't even know. <laughs> you just have to copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Um, so that is how you would take like the self-care planner and turn it into a planner that sells. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to do 2023 planner. Let me just look and see. I mean, you can see there's definitely a lot. So there's 34,000 right now. And that's why I always recommend um, niching down. So if we add the word self-care to it, it brings it down to 2,631 results. So you can see how adding a more specific niche will help you to stand out in amongst the competition. Now I can tell you, she has gone through and she has used every um, popular hashtag that exists out there. And you can look at this and see which hashtags that she's using. She's got self-care, student, dated, undated, self-care, that girl aesthetic, iPad planner, monthly planner, daily planner, good nose planner. Um, something she doesn't have on this particular one is ADHD, but I can tell you just because I've seen it, she has that too, because there it is. So she has added all of those keywords in to her products so that they come up no matter what um, you type in. Like her stuff comes up constantly. And so, um, yes, you are definitely gonna be competing against people like this. And that is why you want yours to look different. You don't want yours to look like this. You want yours to look unique and be, you know, your own style so that you stand out and you're not trying to compete against this, you are creating something unique that's your own. Um, so that is how you create a digital planner that will make a lot of money um, if you do it right. And so what I recommend doing is, you know, 
obviously I do research on Etsy. I use the Everbee um, tool to do my research there. There's a couple of other tools that I do use to do my research and I will link all of my tools down below in the description. Um, but I use Sales Samurai, I use Marmalade, uh, I use E-Rank, um, trying to think, oh, I use Allura. So um, you see this little, so there's the B, but then there's also the A, this is Allura. So if I click on Allura, it will give me information on this. So this one has 13 reviews, 184 favorites, 42 sales. It tells you all the tags that they use. And this is a bestseller too, and this is a different company. This is Omnix Designs. And she's definitely gone with that same boho aesthetic, um, simple design, and we can analyze her listing. It says 21 people have bought this in the last 24 hours. It's a brand new listing, one month old, $322 a month is their estimated revenue. I would guess it's higher than that. Um, and then here's again, all of their keywords. This is Everbee, and it's probably my favorite for doing really quick, easy research, uh, just to look at um, the overall of a product and see how it's doing. Uh, but again, it's not a 100% accurate, you know, it's going to be, there's going to be variations in those numbers. But um, so if you want to create a digital planner, those are the two templates that I have. And again, you do not have to use one of these templates. Um, you know, you can see, I mean, I'm showing you, these are the types of pages that I put in there. Um, lots of daily schedules. Um, monthly schedules, debt tracker, budget, and you can see what other people put in their planners. And if you're going to create one from the from scratch, you're simply going to go in here and you're going to put planner and it's going to pull up eight and a half by 11, which is a pretty typical size. Um, you can make it a different size if you want to, or if you want it to be a two page layout, then you would want to double check the measurements. Um, let me see. I can tell you what size I used. Um, I used 11.69 by 8.27 for my planner layout. And so um, that would be for the two page planners like this. And so you can definitely create, um, you know, something like this in, in this two page layout style as well. Some people prefer that. Personally, I like the single page, but that's just my personal preference. So you could you can do both for sure. Um, and then I also offer a landscape version of my planners too, because some people like the single page, but they like it to be um, like this. And so we also offer, it's very similar to the self-care planner, um, but it's just done this way instead and has you know basically the same types of pages but it's done in a different layout um, and so if you're creating your own you're basically just going to go in here and you're going to you know look at okay what pages do i want you're going to create an index and you can look at templates in here um, and sometimes it will <laughs> it will give you some options and sometimes it won't um, so table of contents. So you can look and obviously like you can't just turn around and like take a pro feature and bring it over here and use it unchanged. Like you couldn't just go in and just sell this. Um, but you can take it and use it as inspiration or, um, you know, edit it. If you're not selling it as a template, um, which that's a whole nother tutorial on how to actually sell templates. Um, like for PLR, which is what I do with my business is templates that people can buy and edit and resell as their own. Um, but if you're not selling it as a template, then the pro features, you have to make changes to pro features in order to use them in your products. And so it gets a little sketchy and honestly, you want to create something that's unique. So, you know, if you like the way that something looks, um, you can certainly use it as inspiration, but make changes to it. Don't just steal it because um, that's not cool. You know, as far as this isn't going to be like a full Canva tutorial on how to hyperlink, but and, and do all the all the things. But I will tell you in order to link, you saw that little link pop up in order to link your words to a page, then you would click here, click the three dots, click the link and then choose the page you're linking to, hit done, 
and now it's linked to that page. That's how you link. And so, um, you know, linking is, is not that difficult. Um, you just kind of have to think the process through. Uh, you know, I would create all the pages first and make sure you have everything the way you want it before you start creating your links. Uh, and, you know, like on this one, I have all of the hyperlinks, you know, on this side here. And once I got it all completely done, then all I had to do was create this one time and then copy and paste it to all the pages. Um, those are just some of my insights. So if you're creating on your own, then you can just start going to town in here really and um, creating all your pages. You'd create your cover image and your index and then your daily pages, weekly pages, monthly pages, your habit trackers, uh, budget trackers, meal planners, like you can really, the sky's the limit with these um, because you can really kind of do whatever you want to. Um, you know, we've created several different types of planners. This is one of my favorite ones. And honestly, it's not been like a huge bestseller. I probably need to revamp um, how I market it, but it's a self-care planner and um, it's just a one month planner. And so it has 170 pages to it and it has you know, the trackers and goals, the daily planners, and then it basically each one is day one, day two, and it has all, it's kind of like what I was showing you earlier. Um, there's four pages inside of each day, the self, self-care self planner page, um, the tips, the um, daily devotions, daily journal, that, and it has that for every single page. And so it's not like the content is crazy different. Um, you know, it's the same four pages 31 times basically plus the dividers and then the only thing that's a little different is um up here so this daily planner page each of these numbers is linked to each one of these section headers and then the tracker uh trackers and goals there's just one set of these so like this monthly habit tracker is literally just 31 days of a bunch of different habits and so it's not um, it doesn't have to be inside of every single month uh, and then this getting started just kind of has an assessment and that type of thing so I love this planner like this one this is one that I could like actually use on a daily basis and not feel overwhelmed with personally um, and as you can see it's 170 pages and Canva had no problem hyperlinking all of this together uh, but again, there's just, there's so many different options of what you can do when you're creating a digital planner to sell. Um, and then, so the next step of creating these planners and selling them is making sure, obviously, you know, you've done your research, but then you also need to make sure that you create listing images that are aesthetically pleasing. Um, you know, you want to, if you go back to the, the that girl planner, you can see like her, she spent a lot of time making sure that her planners, like they all look very similar, her listings do, but I mean, it's just very aesthetically pleasing. It's nice and it's eye catching and they're done correctly. And so, you know, I would be much more apt to click on something like this than I would something that feels a little bit more cluttered. It's not quite as pleasing to the eye. I think the simpler your first photo is the better. Um, you know, like this is nice for sure. Um, but there's just, sometimes it's a little, a little too cluttered. Um, and so you just want to make those clean and simple, make sure your description has lots of, um, good keywords in it and, um, you know, transform your life, eliminate your day-to-day -day stress, become the most productive version of yourself, minimalist digital planner. So minimalist is another keyword to use, um, lovers of minimalism functionality like they've used a lot of keywords in here that are going to come up in those search engines um, and then of course you know they've added all of the right tags and and all of that kind of stuff to um, make sure that they show up with every single search that is out there so having good listing images and then also just making sure that you have a good description in there and then don't be afraid to list the same product multiple times in different ways because like this is the same planner this is the that girl planner it's just a different cover it's a different cover marketed to a different group of people and um 15 people have bought this in the last 24 hours it's making over four thousand dollars a month so um you know she has got multiple multiple bestsellers but um bottom line is is you know 
don't copy, but you can definitely use this as inspiration for um, creating a planner that is going to sell. Um, but again, be unique because you don't want to try to compete with their $2.99 price on their thing. They have a 70% 70 70 off sale going on right now, which, um, you know, that's probably, it's obviously, it's only for the next three hours. It's a limited time. I hope this helps you. I feel like I kind of went all over the place. I know that when I like finalize this whole video, I will definitely be like editing down because I probably have an hour and a half of recording here that I need to just put into a nice concise video for you guys. But um, I wanted to get this out there because I have had several of you ask about this. Um, I'm working on a full Canva tutorial, a Pinterest tutorial. I've got several others that I'm working on, but I've also got um, a lot of other irons in the fire. I'm working on my courses. I'm getting those released over the next several weeks. Those are coming out. Um, and those courses are going to be for those of you who are just wanting like step by step, let's get this done. Like that's what those are going to be for. So, um, you know, make sure to watch for those. I will link everything up in the description for you, all the tools that I used. Um, and again, if you have questions, just put them in the comments. I do get on here several times a week and answer questions and try to just really help you guys as much as I can. All right. I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give me a like and subscribe. And um, I'll be back next week with another video.